Hi, my name is Miles Gordon, and I'm an emergency medicine ultrasound fellow at the North Shore University Hospital in Manhasset, New York. I'd like to start by thanking my mentors, Dr. Cohen, Dr. Rolston, and Dr. Nelson, for all of your support and your guidance throughout my fellowship. I'd also like to thank AIUM for being so creative during this time to allow us to share our research and our ideas. Our presentation is Time for Change, Doppler Ultrasound for Pulse Check in Cardiac Arrest. I have no disclosures. Out-of-hospital cardiac arrest is something we see commonly in the emergency department and often with poor outcomes due to older age of patients, downtime, and low incidence of bystander CPR. We rely on the protocol from advanced cardiopulmonary life support for guidance during these resuscitations, but studies show that many of the steps we take, including medications, are not as helpful as we would like. Even though it is meant to simplify our decisions in a stressful situation, ACLS can be daunting when looking at it in writing. Before we even get to the initial step of ACLS, let's assess whether we even need to go down that route. We must determine whether the patient has a pulse, and the result will send us one of two directions. The decision to start compressions is of the utmost importance, and an incorrect determination of pulse presence leads to a patient receiving unnecessary compressions, leading to rib fractures and increased morbidity, or worse, a pulseless patient not receiving compressions, medications, and defibrillation if indicated. The problem is palpating a pulse is difficult. Throughout medical school and residency, I was always dumbfounded how my seniors could palpate pulses with such confidence, and I stood there unsure of myself. But it's also possible that they may not have felt a pulse at all. Palpating a pulse is limited for many reasons, including experience, environmental stressors, the patient's body habitus, and hypovolemic conditions. The best way to assess a pulse is by using an arterial line, but this is also a limited option because it requires the time to place one in a patient with flat or calcified vessels, as well as having emergency department nurses or techs trained on how to set up, maintain, and help troubleshoot a line. So what can we do to improve how we initiate ACLS if manual palpation is inaccurate and arterial lines can be challenging to place and time consuming? This is when we turn to Doppler ultrasound as a fast, cheap, and hopefully accurate way to assess for the presence of a pulse. The objective of our study was to assess the accuracy of detecting ephemeral pulse by comparing Doppler ultrasound and manual palpation using ephemeral arterial line as the gold standard. Our study was prospective and a convenient sample of adult atraumatic cardiac arrest patients. As the treating team initiated care, a member of our ultrasound team set up and then placed a left-sided femoral arterial line. During the subsequent pulse check, a probe was placed over the femoral artery and recorded a clip. The treating team was then asked if a pulse was felt and the response was recorded. We would then document if there was an arterial tracing on the A-line. So how do we assess for a pulse using Doppler ultrasound? We use a high-frequency linear probe. We use Doppler mode and we place it over the femoral artery, ensuring that the gate is in the middle of the artery. We then visualize the flow pattern, and we considered a positive ultrasound with any tracing that resembled an arterial waveform. So far, as we are still enrolling patients, we have 43 pulse checks from 14 patients. Five of the 14 patients survived to hospital admission. However, unfortunately, none of them survived to hospital discharge. There were nine males and five females, and the median age was 81 years old. This chart compares the sensitivity, specificity, and accuracy of both Doppler ultrasound and manual palpation compared to arterial line results. In each statistical category, Doppler ultrasound was superior to manual palpation. Ultrasound was considerably more sensitive than manual palpation, which had more than triple the number of false negatives than from ultrasound. Ultrasound had zero false positives with 100% specificity, while manual palpation had 7% false positives. The best explanation for this is that the provider mistook their own pulse for the patient's pulse. Our goal is to have a test that is accurate, that correctly identifies the true positives and true negatives from a pool of data. And overall, the accuracy of ultrasound was 86% compared to 54% for manual palpation. This preliminary data is showing us that we are starting our ACLS algorithms incorrectly almost half of the time, and we don't need to. We just need to use ultrasound. 
As we know, the outcome from ACLS is binary. It's quite literally life or death. Are we willing to flip a coin in these life or death situations by using antiquated methods of feeling for a pulse through skin, fat, muscle, and glove? Or do we put a probe down below the inguinal crease, hit Doppler, and have instantaneous feedback? An arterial line is a great option if you have that capability. However, in both of my EDs, the nurses are not trained on A-lines. That means in addition to running the code, I have to set up a pressure bag, make sure there's no air in the tubing, place an A-line in the patient who is, at best case scenario, hypotensive, connect, and then fiddle with the connection every time the waveform disappears. That's too much for me. I know we like to think of ourselves as multitaskers, but this is one of those times when I want all of my focus on finding reversible causes of the cardiac arrest. Ultrasound is easy, it's fast, and now we know how much more accurate it really is. So next time you have a patient in cardiac arrest, don't flip a coin. It's time for change. Thank you.